uh, I will admit to a, uh, a decent amount of ignorance where regard to international law is. Um, I wasn't sure if I sailed into Canadian waters how much of an issue that is. So I took a channel closer to the American side here on the Detroit River. It's actually still in Canadian waters, but uh, to actually be in American waters, it wasn't really a channel, um, and it was not that deep. So I don't know. I'm going down this primrose path here. It's like trees on both sides and lined with red and green. I'm hoping it doesn't march me straight into a customs or immigration point. We'll see. Carrie and I are walking the mean and streets deadly dangerous streets of Detroit. Oh, oh. People are like bicycling. There was a guy that had his ferret in one hand and bicycling, taking his <laughs> ferret for a ride. And now we're headed down to a nice microbrewery. And of course, we're. Up with a new friend. And of course, we're walking because we have zero fear of anything. I mean, I haven't even seen any bodies yet. Barbecue. Oh, there's our new bread. Look at this. This is kind of interesting. Look at how beautiful. Got these buildings completely refitted. This is our new friend, Megan. So tonight we're eating at a place called They Say here in Detroit, which is um, kind of a jazz club uh, restaurant. It's um, not typically catering to people of our... Excuse me, young man. But here is the They Say. Welcome to They Say, where's the event? <laughs> So we didn't have a chance to visit the belt during the evening hours, which is when it's really hopping. Uh, we decided to do laundry instead, but you know, coming here in the morning when it's nobody else here, gives you a chance to really appreciate it without the, the crush of people. And uh, it's an amazing space. Just have a look for yourself. I'm told they play some sort of a game where they hit a small white ball with a wooden stick here. I don't know. Here at Ford Field, this is where the Detroit Lions play. And uh, actually, if we brought locks and we weren't uh, required to vacate our, our slip, even having a free family day to come, I don't know, see stuff, adopt a player, something like that. <laughs> yeah. These guys only make like several million dollars a year, so you know a lot of them need homes, you know, like for 50 cents a day. For 50 cents a day, you can adopt an NFL player. So you know, consider giving. You getting good photos this morning? I did. Oh boy, I tell us you're recording. Yeah. Because <laughs> you don't record. Beautiful photos this morning. Because you never record yourself. Place. You do videos. Oh. Yeah. Selfie. You love video. selfies. Oh, you're the biggest liar in the whole world. Video. I don't like videos. I don't like being oh. on video. Well, here you are. You. Well, I'm just saying, so at least people don't think that I'm abusing <laughs> you and not allowing you to be in the videos. It is your choice. Yeah. No, I no. would rather be behind the camera. Oh. The one thing that I found really surprising is that for a major city and metropolis, the people are shockingly friendly. Everybody saying, you know, good morning, hello, and uh, what a what a great treat to have uh, people waving, saying hi, telling you good morning. It, uh, yeah, I, I have to say, Detroit was nothing uh, like I thought it would be. I never felt like there was danger, not for a second. Uh, it's a city you can tell, like, really working at being revitalized. Tons of active people. <laughs> Some of them are kamikaze bikers, but still. Um, what a great city. And I think that uh, need to uh, 
come back here and spend some time. Um, this is a good city. I like this. It's way better than I thought it would be. So if you're making your way north on the St. Clair River, I, I will tell you that they tell you to stick to the Canadian side, and it, it is true. So uh, we're moving along at about 5.3 knots, and that's the sensor under the boat. We're actually moving like somewhere between 4.1 to 4.6. And the further and the closer I am to shore, the more it is 4.6. The more I am in the center of the waterway, the more it is 4.1. So the, the current seems to be faster in the center than it is out of the outside. So if you can stay to the outside of the uh, channel markers, uh, you're gonna find you fighting the current a little bit less. And the Canadian side seems to be better than the American side. Very quickly because we're in the eddy current before before we hit the bridge, and we'll see what we do after the bridge. And we're again we're on the Canadian side, favoring this side. Then my understanding is after the bridge we will slow down considerably. Same exact RPMs. Speed is dropping. So I've got to set up in a wing-on-wing -wing configuration because the wind is all straight behind us. And I also set up a jibe preventer on the main to make sure it doesn't take my head off. Good sailing. We're not going to win the regatta, but then again, they're just going in circles. So. Well, there are too many times that we just straight sail without the motor, but we're here in this wing on wing and just with a moderate breeze, we're able to maintain, what are we doing about, how fast? Three, three and a half. Nice. Oh yeah, got half the speed of smell. It was pretty cool to have the motor off for a little bit. We're not in a huge hurry to get to the next place, so we'll let ourselves do some real sailing. Brussels sprouts. For some unknown reason, we have lost cell service uh, yesterday and today. And we don't really know why we have visible mobile. And uh, it's actually worked pretty darn well. It's supposed to have backbone on Verizon. And we've been through towns with stoplights and houses and everything, but uh, it hasn't worked since yesterday afternoon. So. When, one thing is like near your house, but when you're out here on a boat, it's like you are in space. We have you know, luckily we're able to use the radio to get a, a weather forecast. Otherwise, we wouldn't know what the winds were going to be. You don't know anything when you're out here. So uh, I hope that the world is still existing out there. If not, like we'll see you guys in a couple of days, and uh, you know, y'all be cool. And if the world has ended, um, I am now your king and worship me. So, you got that going for you. Okay, so we're staying at Harbor Beach. And I come over here to plug in the power. And it looks like this. I don't want to touch it. There's too many spiders. Wait, you see? It's, it's a spider cornucopia. It's, it's literally thousands. So the Harbor Marina, Harbor Beach Marina, has a shuttle service at the and the lovely Tell me again, Leandra, Leandra <laughs> is giving us a ride into town to get into the grocery store. I mean, how do you how do you complain about service like that? Well, you don't. That's what you don't do. So uh, she's taking us to her favorite grocery store and the best one because there's you know probably a lot of them around here, but there's one that's like way better than the other. So here we go. <laughs> so here in Harbor Beach going to the grocery store slash gas station slash Chester's Chicken. <laughs> Might have to get some Chester's Chicken actually now that sounds pretty good. Andy and Rich on a haunted boat. <laughs> Seriously, 
The boat is haunted. Oh, Matilda.